Okay, so the Great Pyramid is right here with the basalt it's kind of landing here, flat area with the stones, and there are a couple of pieces here. And the interesting thing is, is that there's a bit of a match up with the stone. So on here, if you look carefully, you can see the little straight lines going through, or straightish lines. And you can see them here, so just sort of following this up and through. And you can see the workmanship on this stone. And then this stone here has the cuts in it right here also. And in this case here, you can still see the marks, the same marks within the stone here. Just beside the Great Pyramid once again. The last spot was just over here, but uh, another place here where the stone is remarkable. So we'll look at a few still shots from here. Okay, the Great Pyramid is right here. And with this stone here, you have the workings right here and also here, here and here. Just having a bit of a closer look through here and here. Now, just a bit of an idea. So, through here is yet another example. And in this case, you can see the variation in line right here. And the very definite, like, lines right through. So there's that one here, and then again here, there is a whole lot more cuts. And you can see them in here. And again, through here. Now, with this rock here, and the pyramid is just up here. Just so, first of all, we can see the the, the marks, depressions into the rock on this side, but on this side, you can really see that workmanship and you can see the very fine marks through here cut into this basalt this is the side of it and then this one here is highly remarkable with the uh, cut running just straight through here it it just it just looks like a cut basically so we'll have a look at some stills from both places So one mark is right through here in that rock there and again they just dotted around here so more here workings deep into the rocks. Okay. So this is the other side of it and it's kind of recessed out and coming around this way some really so there's a bit of a line going down here and then across the top there's this line that tracks through here also and leads to the cut although the cut's kind of gone off in a way and here is yet a further look now you can kind of see that it, undul it, it, it undulates along here and if you touch it, it undulates also. Now, 
it, there is a straight, a straight cut through here, and yeah, this is like, it's hard to tell if it is a straight line through there. I'll just get a good look at it, or a curved one. Okay, so it's just phenomenal the amount of stuff within this museum. It is, it, it, it's overwhelming, but right now within this case here, uh, all sorts, the, uh, that doorway again is so prominent, uh, the Hathor type horns right here, and you have these pieces right here, which look to be cogs for spindles. So really, really interesting stuff. This sculpture dates back to the 5th dynasty and you can see the plaque here. So it dates back around four and a half thousand years uh, according to mainstream history. I noticed the two cuts at the back of the sculpture so I just took some photographs of these. The Museum of Egyptian Antiquities in Cairo, Egypt is massive, so due to my own uh, time constraints, I was almost running through the place to find this vase of schist, which wasn't that easy to find. Uh, so photographs, I, I've taken them through the glass. Now, we can read the description for it. Vase of schist of unique form intended to be mounted on a post and possibly intended to hold lotus flowers. First dynasty, so we're talking around 5,000 or just over 5,000 years ago, First Dynasty, Saqqara, Tomb of Cebu. Now, other uh, commentators such as Brian Forster, and there will be uh, many other aspects uh, within this video that Brian Forster, for example, has uh, commented on, but uh, nonetheless, uh, with this uh, vase of schist, uh, there are other vases that have these similar sort of turnover form to them. Now, 
Now, with this vase in the museum, you can see that much of it has been sort of recreated, if you will, and that it's not like sort of perfect in form, if you will. It's not, you know, kind of machine-like uh, as one might uh, think it is. If you look close up. Let's note that they have stated possibly, uh, possibly intended to hold lotus flowers. So they're not saying it is so. They do state of unique form. So you can see the round bore kind of clearly there. You can also just to the side see it uh, just to the side also right there and there. We ventured to Abu Ghraib, which is around about 15 kilometers out of Cairo, and you have the Sun Temple of Nisur there. Now, around the there's a bit of a pyramid there, and around the area you have the bowls, the alabaster bowls, and the various markings on there suggestive of machine work. In this case, you can see that uh, th there's been a bore-like uh, device going into this stone. So a really interesting place. I thought I'd uh, basically show uh, some various tools and uh, you know signs of, of ancient technology and machine work. So I hope you've enjoyed the video.